Good morning, YouTube, and hello from Chicago. As you can see, I am not at home right now. I'm obviously not in the kitchen, and that's because I'm here traveling for a work event. But in this lovely hotel room, we had some beautiful daylight, and I figured why not pop in real quickly to share my three-month update. Now, initially, I had wanted to do, I think, monthly updates for my YouTube journey, but I think I hit the two-month mark and realized there's really not that much to share that would make for I think a pretty boring video and because I respect you and your time I wasn't gonna do that I also respect my time and I wasn't gonna make that video and just like my last check-in video I'll be sharing some of my highs and lows on YouTube how things are going and what else I'm working on and then some things that you can expect to see from the channel in the next couple of weeks or months basically what I'm working on if you want to stick around so to kick things off with some of the highs, I think one of the best things about being on YouTube this early is that sense of excitement when you realize that someone is watching your videos, that you are seeing some of that slow and steady growth. I mean, spoiler, I am not blowing the lid off of any records over here, but here is the current follower count. So you can see it's much better than my first month. And that has been really steady. I've been doing a combination of shorts and long form videos. And I think it is a sustainable pace considering how busy I am with everything else. And I'll get into, you know, my analytics here in a little bit and show you a little bit more behind the scenes. But that has been really encouraging because it's not like I put something out there and it just disappears into the abyss of the internet and no one ever sees it. Like, not a lot of people are seeing it, but people are seeing it. And I would say most of the other highs for the past couple of months have come more in the life or professional arenas, and I'll probably save those updates for a different video. But I think, <laughs> to be totally transparent and very, very honest, there's probably been more low points and frustrations with YouTube at this point than anything, and I'll show you a little bit more about why. Now, if you've watched any of my videos, especially all the way to the end where I kind of share some outtakes or bloopers, you know that the noise has been a constant struggle. I am offsite right now. I'm in Chicago. And so there's obviously, you know, noise from the city. But the difference is these are like double paned windows and the walls are insulated. Meanwhile, at home in Kansas City, the neighborhood where my office is, is kind of under development. It's kind of in this limbo of being like totally abandoned versus like trying to revitalize it. And that means there's just a lot going on down there. On top of that, we're also at this intersection of a very busy railroad. You know that the trains are like my ultimate nemesis right now. And we're in the flight path of the downtown airport. There's constantly like cars backfiring and drag racing in the streets. You know, it's just a lot of things that I personally have zero control over. And the best thing I found so far is to try and do most of my filming on the weekends. And you know, that's, obviously not ideal. I would like to have, you know, weekend days off, but one of the upsides of being self-employed is to be flexible in my schedule and at least try to avoid like some of that work and construction noise that might be going on around me. Now, another frustration or, you know, kind of like sticky point with filming has been just the timing of it. You know, I mentioned trying to film more on the weekends, but in addition to that, I had some open days between the holidays. So like the end of 2022 before the beginning of this year and had all of these ideas planned out and ready to go. And my skin looked horrible. I've never been like officially diagnosed with eczema, but I'm almost certain that's what it was. I mean, I had like welts around my eyes. I looked like a raccoon with just like red circles, you know, just tight and hot and itchy. And needless to say, that was very much less than ideal for being on camera. And don't get me wrong, like if you follow me on social media, you know that I'll show up looking any kind of way, but it was like literally painful to have to step outside, come into the office. I think it was triggered mostly by cold this time. I think a combination of cold and stress because I mean, the holidays are stressful enough as it is, but we had a break in the Kansas city weather where it was consistently feeling like 20 below zero for like three days in a row. And if you follow me on social media, you also know that I go around the neighborhood and I feed the community cats. So I could not, obviously leave them unfed when it was so, so cold. But when I went out there, you know, I was totally bundled up. I had like a scarf and a hat and literally like the only skin that was exposed was right here underneath my eyes. And that's really where it started. And it just kind of like spread from there. So it finally, after, you know, I would say a week and a half or two weeks, finally calmed down enough for me to get back on camera and look at all presentable and not terrifying. And 
that kind of put me behind. So I did miss a few uploads in the month of January and going into February. I think I'll finally have enough of a consistent schedule to get into a bit of a routine and catch back up with where I plan to be. And when it comes to where I want to be, I haven't really set like hard and fast goals around something like a subscriber count or analytics in the back end of a video because I'm so new to this. I really don't know what's realistic or what to even expect. It's really more like these are the ideas that are just like floating around in my brain. And I did find a really helpful tool to kind of map that out. It's actually a mind mapping software and it's free, um, but I'll give you a glimpse at just sort of the way it's laid out. So you can kind of see it's color coded and organized in a way that helps me understand, okay, if I make this video, what else can that connect to? Or how could I maybe turn this into a series of some kind and string it all together? And that actually has been really helpful for planning out monthly content. So if you're someone like me who hasn't really used a content calendar, let this be a note to you that it is actually incredibly helpful. I was like a denier for a long time. I was like, oh, you know, I can handle this. I don't need to plan that far in advance. But now that I am several years into this whole content creation phase of my you know, business and career, it really is mandatory, I think, to have an idea of what you're working on this month, next month, the month after that, and also kind of projecting for some of those things that come up every year. I'm also like a list person, so I really like seeing, you know, here's an item that I finished, I can color code it and add my little, you know, check mark emoji, and that's a nice little like serotonin boost to my brain. But, you know, I think for January, I was pretty on track until about the middle of the month when I had to travel for a work event. And this is not a complaint at all because the events were fantastic. And the great thing about this is it's given me a lot of creative ideas for things that I can include in future videos. So, you know, there's that trade off. You want to be at home working on this stuff because you're excited about it and you want to get it going. But at the same time, you still have to keep the wheels moving for everything else that keeps your business going. And as far as what else I'm working on, I did end up getting one of my sessions accepted to the events that I proposed to. I remember in my last video I had gotten nothing but rejections and that wasn't feeling great obviously but I will be speaking at the Oklahoma Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics Conference so if you're an Oklahoma dietitian watching this come say hi I'll be glad to see you there I am also zeroing in on the end of that massive recipe development project that I was working on so I think that's been going on since like October maybe is when I started it but it's just a lot of recipes and you know it's really kind of tedious once you get into the intricacies of okay are we using a half tablespoon here or what does that translate to for grams and converting from standard to metric and you know it's not fun it's not glamorous but like I said in the last video that has taken a lot of pressure off to open up my schedule you know that pays the bills for a few months to allow me to do some of these other things that are more creative or flexible in what I end up doing with them. All right, and to kind of show you where it's going and what I'm working on, I have a few videos in the works that I'm gonna be editing. I have also noticed how expensive food is getting, and so I really wanna share a few videos that I'm working on about how to you know, shop on a budget, You know, some of these more affordable and easy to access foods, because the rhetoric I keep hearing has gone to like very far ends of the extreme. You're either spending you know, your entire budget on very high-end premium, probably not honestly any better food, but on the other end, it's like ultra processed and terrible for you and you're doing a disservice to your health. And there's obviously a ton of middle ground in between those two extremes. And so I really wanna share, like I said, a few more just practical and realistic ways because while some of those videos can be entertaining, you know, like the spectacle of it all, I don't know that that's actually helpful for everyday people. And at the end of the day, that's who I wanna help, that's who I wanna be talking to, and that's who I hope is watching my videos. But I know you're probably curious to just see what these analytics are looking like. One of the most interesting things I think early on was, you know, I don't know if this is like a YouTube thing and they do this to everybody, but they almost like tease you with a little bit of early success. Like to date, my first video is still my best video as far as, you know, the number of views and watch hours and, you know, subscribers that have come from that video. And I think it's because, you know, early on, that was one of the videos that was getting a lot of impressions. So if you're familiar with some of the metrics and analytics for things like social media or blogging, or in this case, YouTube, impressions are basically the number of times that it shows the video to people and gives them the chance or the opportunity to click on it. And then that metric converts to a click through rate. So, you know, that's one of the things that YouTube will use to sort of judge how 
good your video is basically asking hey if we throw this out in front of a few people in the beginning is it good enough to keep showing to other people and they'll click on it and watch it too and this first video i mean i was pretty impressed i was like very excited to see that trending line like going up 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 but what i noticed is after a couple of weeks and this actually happened to all of my videos for the most part is that you know it had that initial upward spike and then it was literally Flat. So you can see that happening here and here and here again and again and again. And not only was it flatlining like that, but also the total number of views and watch hours was decreasing. So I haven't quite figured out, you know, is that an issue with my title? Is it issues with my thumbnails? Is it just the content topic itself? And it's not really things that people are interested in. Like I said, I was repurposing some content in the early days, but going into like that mind map of the other content ideas I have, what I'm hoping is that these things are a little bit more intriguing and catch people's attention and get some interest enough to click on the video, watch it, subscribe it, comment, engage, all that good stuff. I think you can also see like a really obvious dip in pretty much all activity whenever I'm not online because I'm either at an event or traveling or something like that. So there is a, an overlapping pattern across all of these graphs where you can see, you know, right there in the middle of January is when I was attending that event in New Orleans and obviously was very, very busy with other things, but totally inattentive to YouTube. I wasn't doing any promotion. I wasn't doing any sharing, you know, no shorts or anything like that. So there was really nothing to drive people to my channel. And that was kind of a good litmus test to let me know, like, how hard do I have to push that gas pedal to get it to go? And I think the answer, at least at this point is like, pretty hard. I need to be a little bit more consistent and regular with either promotion or posting and all of that stuff. Because if I don't, I mean, the views literally drop to almost nothing. All right. And the last little bit I'm going to show you is the progress towards monetization, because it's been no secret that for a lot of YouTubers, monetization is one of the goals they want to hit. And in order to do that, you need to have at least a thousand subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time in a calendar year. So, you know, maybe you had a video spike early on, but it's more than a year old. Those watch hours won't actually count towards your progress to monetization. So here's where I currently sit. And as you can see, my subscriber count is tracking a lot higher than my watch hours at this point. But that's also probably because I don't have a lot of content to watch. Like I only have 10 long form videos, a bunch of shorts. Most of those are showing up in the shorts feed and that doesn't actually count towards watch hours unless they find those videos from some other avenue. This is really just to sort of document my YouTube journey. And if that's interesting or you know, you are just nosy like that too, feel free to subscribe and follow along. I mean, if you've, made it this far into an update about someone who's been on YouTube for three months, I would hope you're at least interested to hit that subscribe button. It's literally free. It costs you nothing. And you can always unsubscribe later if it turns out it's not your thing. So that's it for this update. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Kara and I'm the dietitian behind Street Smart Nutrition. And I really appreciate you taking an interest in small channels like mine and following along on this YouTube journey as I try to grow my channel about fearlessly nourishing meals. I hope I'll see you in another video soon.